The holiday season is a time to open your home and your heart, a warm place to celebrate with family and friends. And for many households, the hearth is the centerpiece. Joining us with these festive ideas to get your fireplace mantles holiday ready is lifestyle blogger Heather O'Shaughnessy. It is good to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So mantle decorating, super important, but I love a good mantle. What makes the perfect decorated mantle? Um, okay, so there are lots of tips for decorating your mantles. I will say, I think the only rule uh, to follow is to know that, you know, this is your home. You know, it's your fireplace, the center of your home. Stay true to your style. I think a lot of people get caught up in trying to make it look just like the Pinterest picture or the magazine, and um, you don't need to do that. Remember, you want to showcase your family's personality through that. Um, that being said, there are some tips to help keep it, you know, looking like a cohesive look um, and being a little more visually appealing to the eye. You definitely want to make sure you have five things. One is a theme, um, a focal point, some height, some weight and some fillers. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really five simple things because the worst thing you can do is go into Hobby Lobby and start throwing things in your cart that you like. When you get home, you're gonna get very overwhelmed because while all beautiful, they don't really go well together. Right. So think about, okay, if I'm doing a fall mantle, do I want oranges or do I gravitate towards green or white pumpkins? You know, what am I going for? Maybe pick one piece and kind of pick out some colors and build from it. Um, because having a vision in mind will save you a lot of frustration. Yes, <laughs> indeed, indeed. And I, it's funny that you should talk about weight and height and spillers because it's kind of the same notion of flower boxes, the th th thrillers, fillers, and spillers. Exactly. Our eye likes what it likes, right? Um, yes. So you want to have a focal point once you have that theme. Um, and that can be, you know, for a lot of you, it might be your TV that you're going to decorate around. Whatever it is, you want it big and right there in the middle of your mantle, whether it's hanging or leaning. Um, for me, I like a beautiful piece of art throughout the year. And then at the holidays, I'll put a mirror up. I switch it to a mirror because I like a big festive wreath and I can put a little command hook and hang that and nothing beats the glow of, you know, candlelight or the reflection from the Christmas tree across the room off that glass mirror. So it's almost like having two trees in the room. You've got exactly. that many, many more lights. Absolutely. Exactly. What are the things that you should avoid do to, doing? Okay, you want to, one, avoid mixing a lot of different colors and patterns. Um, two, you want to make sure that you put your taller weighted items to the outside of a mantle. Don't kind of just throw them on in the inside because it's not going to create a balance. I don't really follow symmetry as much. You don't have to do the exact same thing on both sides of your focal point. Um, you can ground it by bringing in that weight. Um, but you want it to be on the outside so that it brings balance. And then that feeds into your fillers, which to me that is the best part of decorating a mantle because um, that's the heart of it, right? So your filler pieces are gonna be your grandmother's candlesticks, your favorite books, um, anything, family photos, anything that is the heart of your family that you're kind of gonna fill in those gaps on your mantle. Absolutely, and I love the idea of also pulling from nature. You know, sometimes what you want on your mantle is sitting right outside your door and there's just so many places where you can get little odds and ends to really fill it out and also on a budget too. So it's not impossible to do a beautiful job on a budget. Finally, yeah. for people who are interested in learning more about your lifestyle blogging, where do they go? Um, they can go to my Instagram at Lost in the Low Country or my blog at Lost in the Low Country online. Um, and I'll have tons of holiday recipes, decorating ideas. I've got a great tutorial for how to transfer magnolia leaves, like you said, pulling things from outside. Super cost effective, and it'll carry you the whole season, um, Thanksgiving to Christmas. Love the magnolia leaves. That's that's what our family does every year. Thank you oh, so much, perfect. Heather. It's been such a pleasure. No Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. We're back in two minutes. Bye.